Good morning, Snellville United Methodist Church. I'm Alex Smith, one of the pastors here, and we're so glad that you decided to join us for Resurrection Easter Sunday. Uh, before we get started, if you want to look on Facebook and get the online bulletin, it will have a layout of the service, and it will have the lyrics to the song we're singing. I want to invite you into a time of worship this morning. Here at Snellville, we are welcoming all people into a growing relationship with Jesus. So whoever you are, wherever you are, whoever you're quarantined with, I want you to know that this story of Jesus rising from the dead, it belongs to you as much as it belongs to anyone else. And as weird as it is not to gather for the most important Sunday of the year, I think there's no better Sunday for us to be quarantined because in this Sunday of all Sundays, Easter Sunday reminds us that death does not have the last say that we don't have to fear sickness, we don't have to fear death, because Jesus made a mockery of it. He defeated death in his resurrection, so we can celebrate that this morning. So as we begin worship, uh, let us pray. Dear God, thank you so much for who you are, Lord. In the midst of our anxiety, in the midst of our fear, in the midst of our pain, in the midst of our loss of freedom, in the midst of our loss of daily routine, Lord, we know that you are Lord and that your resurrection means that you are Lord. Lord, I pray that the power of the resurrection would work within us, guiding us to be the people you call us to be, Lord. I pray that the hope of the resurrection would give us the joy in knowing that no matter what happens, our eternity is safe in you, Lord. I pray that you will allow us to release all of our worries and fears for our loved ones and for our own lives into your hands, Lord, and allow us to worship you as the risen Lord. Amen. Now let us begin a time of worship. I serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. I know that he is living, whatever foes may say. I see his hand of mercy, I hear his voice of cheer. And just the time I need him, he's always near. He lives, he lives, he lives Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. In all the world around me, I see his loving care. And though my heart grows weary, I never will despair. I know that he is leading through all the stormy blast. The day of his appearing will come at last. He lives, he lives, he lives Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives. Give his salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. Rejoice, rejoice, O Christian, lift up your voice and sing. Eternal hallelujah to Jesus Christ the King, the hope of all who seek Him, the help of all who find. None other is so loving, so good and kind. He lives, he lives, he lives Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives. Give salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. I don't know about you, but I just love singing 
He Lives. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. I want you to know that today things are going to be a little bit different than they are in a normal service. I'm going to read the scripture early on in the service, and then the sermon is going to be given in parts. I hope you'll enjoy hearing perspectives from persons who, Scripture says, were present at the resurrection on Easter morning. First, let me invite you to hear this word of Scripture from the 20th chapter according to John's Gospel, beginning at the first verse. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. The other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to, my, to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. It's early, early in the morning. And, and well, I didn't sleep very well last night. But who am I kidding? I haven't slept since Friday. My heart is hurting so badly and my tears continue to flow. I'm sad. Uh, I'm beyond sad. There's no words that describe the grief that I feel. I miss my Jesus. And as much as it pains me to come here this morning, I will always honor him. But why is the stone removed? Why is the stone not covering his grave? I, I must hurry. I must go and tell the other disciples what has happened. I must go and tell Simon Peter. They have taken the Lord out of the tomb and, and we do not know where they have laid him. I, 
I am sure they didn't believe me when I told them. I'm sure they didn't believe what I had to say, but they went anyway. They went to see. I feel so helpless. The tears continue to flow and I feel like my hope is lost. Where is Jesus? The tomb that once contained my Lord is now empty and but, but wait, there are, there are two angels. There are two angels sitting on the slab where J- Jesus was once laid. There's, there's two angels, one at, where his head was laid in and one where his feet were placed. I am in total shock and, and my reaction is so vividly, powerfully displayed on my face that that the angels responded to me with a question. Woman, why are you weeping? Why? Why am I weeping? Don't these messengers from God know? Don't they know? Aren't they aware? Can't they see that same slab that they're sitting on is the place where Jesus once laid? They have taken my Lord away, and I do not know where they've placed him. The words had just left my mouth, and I happened to turn around. And as I turned around, I saw him. I I saw this man. I didn't know who he was. And he was speaking to me. And his voice was kind and gentle and and familiar. There was tenderness in his voice. He must be the gardener. He must be the gardener coming to take care of the land, coming to take care of the surroundings. He must be the gardener. That's who he is. But then his, this, this gardener, Well, he posed the same question the angels did. And he questioned me, woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Well, I wonder if he knows. I wonder if he is the one who removed Jesus. I wonder if he knows where my Jesus is laid. So I decided to ask him, sir, if if you've carried him away, Tell me where you've laid him, and and I will take him away. I guess I was hopeful. I guess I was hopeful that he would actually tell me where Jesus was. But that voice, he's not the gardener. I heard his voice call my name. That voice, I heard him call my name. That voice is not the gardener. That voice is my Jesus. That voice is my teacher. My Jesus lives. My teacher lives. This is indeed the greatest news. This is the good news that my heart so needed to hear. Because this day, this moment, this morning has transformed my grief, my tears of grief, into tears of sheer joy. And I must go and tell the others. I must go and share the good news. I have seen the Lord. This morning, as we come to the time of prayer, let me invite you to join me as we pray. And if there are joys or concerns that we don't know about and you do, please send them to us in the comments section of Facebook and we'll be certain to remember them and make certain that everyone knows about them for next week. And if you can and if you're able, we hope you'll remember the church with your financial giving and support We're still working. We're trying to put together services and other activities to keep us all together even while we're apart. 
So if you can support us, we will be deeply grateful, and it will give us an opportunity to try to bless others in the name of Jesus. Now, let me invite you to join me in prayer and then to say together the Lord's Prayer. Gracious and loving God, we give you thanks this day for the blessing of Easter and for the blessing of worshiping together even while we're apart. We pray that your Holy Spirit will fill each of our hearts and lead us all into a closer relationship with you as we celebrate the incredible miracle that Easter brings. We thank you that when the world was at its darkest for those who loved Jesus, you caused a bright light to shine again. Because of the resurrection of the Lord, he is now living eternally and offers eternal life to each one who believes in him. We thank you for this gift, and we pray that you will help us this day and every day to celebrate the wonderful blessing that each of us has in the risen Christ. We thank you that you raised him from death to new life and that the promise of new life is extended to each one of us because of it. Lord, receive this service, receive each of us and fill us anew with hope and joy helping us to remember that even though times on the outside may look bleak, we have the promise of life with you, life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the risen Christ, in whose name we pray. Now hear our prayer as we pray the prayer which Jesus gave to his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
My name is Peter, which means rock. Actually, my name is Simon, but Jesus called me Peter. Before the resurrection, I spent my whole life trying to prove that I was strong. I was the first one out of the boat. I said all sorts of bold things without thinking first. I wanted to build a house for Moses and Elijah and Jesus. I told Jesus I was going to die with him. I dragged a huge net of fish to shore by myself. I came up with the boldest name possible for who Jesus was, Messiah, Son of the living God. When Jesus called my brother and me to follow him, I jumped at the chance to be associated with a leader that everybody saw as strong. He healed sickness. He even raised the dead. He spoke out against leaders that tried to oppose him. He commanded angel armies. He made bread and wine and fish and coins appear out of nowhere. He shone like the sun. When Jesus started to show what I thought was weakness, I tried to control him. I rebuked him for predicting his death. I rebuked him for acting like a servant. And when they tried to arrest him, I pulled out my sword and attacked, even though he wanted to go peacefully. But when it comes down to it, I'm not as strong as I pretend to be. When my life is threatened, I cower just like everybody else. I may have been the only one to get out of the boat, but when I saw the waves, I doubted. I may have been the only one to follow him to the cross, uh, except for the women who are much braver than we are. But when I was confronted, I denied that I even knew Jesus. All of that changed on Resurrection Day. I saw Jesus' true strength when he came back to us, leaving the grave behind. I realized I was enough when he confronted my sin and my weakness, and instead of rejecting me, he promised to use me to lead his people. I saw the strength of his mercy. Now with the grace of the cross covering my weakness and the power of the resurrection giving me true strength, he's using me to feed his sheep. He's even using my inclination to speak too quickly and act too boldly to spread his gospel and demonstrate the power of his kingdom. I don't even have to pretend to be strong anymore. The empty grave means that I can face beatings and imprisonment and even death with the fearlessness of knowing that the presence and the spirit of the risen Lord lives inside of me. Through the resurrection, I can be the rock that I was called to be. I can be Peter. Jesus 
disciple for three long years, teaching them all the things that they were supposed to know to carry on my father's legacy. We went through some difficult times while we stayed together, we prayed together, and we ministered to the poor. But uh, they, however, they seemed not fully comprehend the reason behind my death. I'm certain that things would have been slightly different if they had remained in my father's word. And believe that it was imperative for me to die and resurrect from the dead. How can they come to the tomb trying to find the one who lives? You know, I have told them several times, and also it is written that they were supposed to expect that. You know, my father is faithful and he always fulfills what he promised. I understand that this is a very distant story comparing to the one the world normally hears. And it might take some time before they process it. But I truly I tell you that this is exactly what sets me apart from the false prophet. My crucifixion, death, and resurrection. My hope is that they change their attitude, mind, and heart so they will not have to say things in order to believe. Though I say, blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. They will no longer see me because I'm, a, I'm departing to my father. And even though they will not see me, I will be with them till the end of the age. Now, Peter, John, Mary Magdalene, and the rest of the disciples, I wear that I, I was risen from the dead and I'm ascending to my father. So this is what I'm expecting from them. One, either they will neglect and forget everything they have learned from me, pretending that never happened and go back to their old and conventional occupation. Two, or they will start living a new life by faith, believing and proclaiming that the son of the man is risen. I will not be around, but they have seen everything that I have done and they have heard everything that I have said. Therefore, they will know what to believe. They will know what to do and they will know what to expect. One more thing. If they search the scripture, they will understand and believe that the reason why the son of the man went to the cross was to redeem the world from everything they could not accomplish on their own, which is interceding for them before my father and redeem them from their rebellion, their doubt, their sin, and give them 
eternal life. Indeed, the emptiness of the tomb has authority to fill up everyone's heart with joy, hope, and give them the assurance that there is life after death. The day the Son of Man is risen, so should them, you, and everyone else who believe in the redemptive power of the blood that was shed on the cross for the sin of the world. Do you believe it? Christ our Lord is risen today. Alleluia. Earth and heaven chorus sing. Alleluia. Praise your joys and triumphs. I hope you've enjoyed each and every one of those different perspectives from our clergy, Reverend Tracy, Reverend Alex, Reverend Luis, each have brought to us the opportunity to understand the resurrection of Jesus from a slightly different angle today. They represent people who went to the tomb just as sometimes we go to a tomb looking for something that isn't there. Mary and Peter, John, and perhaps even others went to the tomb that day looking for someone that was dead. And yet, the tomb was empty. Christ had been raised. Even when the risen Christ spoke to Mary, at first, she didn't understand who it was. Sometimes it's true that we don't see what God has for us because all we're looking for is what we expect to see. The amazing thing about God is that he shows us 
the unseen. He shows us things that we cannot predict or understand. Sometimes I hope that we'll all remember the lesson of Easter. Our amazing God will show us possibility that we can never imagine. Our amazing God will give to us everlasting and eternal life. Because he was able to raise Jesus from death, he can also raise us. And all who call upon Jesus' name in faith, giving us the hope of everlasting life. That is the good news of Easter. It is good news every day. And good news I hope we carry with us every day of our lives. May God bless you. And may God give you peace this day and every day. Alone in my sorrow and dead in my sin Lost without hope with no place to begin Your love made a way to let mercy come in When death was arrested and my life began As was redeemed, only beauty remained my orphan grown heart was given a name My morning grew quiet and my feet rose to dance When death was arrested and my life began Oh, your grace so free Washes over me you have made me new now life begins with you it's your endless love pouring down on us you have made us new now life begins with you Release from my chains, I'm a prisoner no more My shame was a ransom he faithfully bore He canceled my debt and he called me his friend Oh, that's when death was arrested and my life began Oh, your grace so free washes over me you have made me new now life begins with you it's your endless love pouring down on us you have made us new, now life begins with you. Our Savior displayed on the criminal's cross. Darkness rejoices, heaven had lost. But then Jesus arose with our freedom in hand That's when death was arrested and my life began That's when death was arrested and my life began Oh, your grace so free washes over me you have made me new now life begins with you it's your endless love pouring down on us you have
have made us new now life begins with you oh we're free oh we're free free forever we're free come join the soul of our long redeem yes we're free we're free forever amen when death was arrested my life began oh we're free free forever we're free come join the song of all the redeemed yes we're free free forever amen when death was arrested my life began when death was arrested my life began that's when death was arrested my life began hallelujah he is risen he is risen indeed hallelujah christ is risen hallelujah christ is risen, risen. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Hallelujah, He has risen. Hallelujah, Christ is 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 risen. Hallelujah. Jesus is risen. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Hallelujah. He is risen. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Yes. This week we've had an opportunity to have a few of our members and staff make a short video. And the video says very simply, Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Our challenge to you this Easter day is to do the very same, to go out and record yourself or members of your family saying, Hallelujah, Christ is risen. And then send it to us, if you can, under the hashtag, He is risen challenge. Send it to hashtag Snellville UMC, hashtag He is risen sometime next week, and we'll be grateful. Now on this Easter day, I hope you enjoy the wonderful blessing of knowing that Christ has been raised, and that because he has been raised, we have the hope of everlasting life. So brothers and sisters, go in peace. Have a week filled with joy and hope, knowing that the risen Christ lives and walks and talks with you. Amen? Hallelujah.